Fraud in the peer review process is a growing problem at scientific journals. In the past three years, more than 250 articles have been retracted because of fake peer reviews, and that accounts for about 15% of all articles retracted. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Managing Editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, and I'm talking with Charlotta Hoag, an international correspondent for the journal. Dr. Hoag has written a perspective article about the ways in which authors are hacking the publication process. Dr. Hoag, when did cases of peer review fraud at scientific journals first start emerging? When did it become clear that this was a widespread problem? I would say less than a year ago that it was such a widespread problem. I was at the time the vice chair of COPE, the Committee of Publication Ethics, and we were contacted by the publisher Biomed Central, actually, who had discovered more systematic peer review fraud. That doesn't mean that we haven't seen it at all. We have, but that has been more individual authors being a little bit creative, making up fake emails and suggesting peer reviewers that were actually themselves. That I've seen before for the last couple of years. So today, how much of the fraud that we're seeing comes from those individual authors working on their own, and how much is orchestrated by agencies that help authors write their articles and then sell favorable peer reviews? We're all worried that this is actually a more general problem than just individual authors doing this on their own. It's very many authors, especially authors without English as their first language, use some kind of help in the writing process of an article, which is legitimate. Okay. But these new industries have that are popping up at the moment mostly, but not only in China. They are quite openly actually advertising a big range of services. And we are afraid that these third party agencies are just making up the research too. Much of the fraud that you cite in your article comes when authors suggest reviewers for their own submissions. And that's a practice that's allowed at many scientific journals. Do you see ways to safeguard that process against the kind of fraud that's happening? Yes, I think what is happening is happening because the whole publication business, to call it that, has been completely changed by the Internet in a very good way. But we are just seeing now the development of new ways of using the Internet. And peer review itself has always been sort of a little bit of a complex thing used to be that it was actually your peers. I mean, you knew the people. But if you had known the people in person, like I guess you do for the New England Journal or I did in Norway then it, when I was editor there, this cannot happen. It can only happen if you're using as peer reviewers people that you don't really know, because then otherwise this wouldn't have been possible at all. You also speak in your article about authors hacking the electronic manuscript handling systems that many journals have. Do you see a solution for that? Or is greater security a possibility? I don't know. I mean, it's a different way they are hacking that system. One is by actually sort of going in and creating false identities inside the manuscript systems. That is one way of doing it. Another way is that is a little bit more sophisticated is that first you create an identity and then you let that identity submit to your journal, for example, the New England Journal with several co-authors, then that uh, paper is rejected, probably. But then you are in the system, these fake people. So next time you think, oh, maybe even you could have picked those reviewers. You have them in your system. You know they have been authors for you or tried to be authors. So I think, in general, the only way to come around this is to have other ways of making sure that you are talking to or writing to the person you think you're writing to. And I think there will always be people that are smarter than these manuscript systems. So I don't think there's any way around finding old-fashioned ways to really identify the people you're dealing with. You talk in your article about an underlying motive for this fraud, and that's the pressure in academia for authors to publish as many articles as they can as quickly as they can. And that may have grown in other parts of the world. You mentioned China, for example. Is that underlying problem something that can be fixed? Oh, I wish it could. It's really the most scary thing for science in general, and especially medicine, because the pressure to publish, even for clinical doctors in China, for example, it's so important to get that paper published. It's important for your career. It's important for your paycheck, for everything. And that means that you're willing to take quite a lot of risk. That's why I think, actually, the journals like New England, like Nature, like Science, is 
very vulnerable here because those are the journals that are most important to publish in for the same reasons. It's not only a problem for smaller, less resourceful journals who cannot get this. It's not the journals that decide what the incentive system for publishing should be, but I think it's important that journals raise this again and again because we are totally dependent on all science being real for everything we publish. To write about it and raise the awareness and trying to see if we can come away from this incentive system, but it's not easy and it's not one group that can do something or one country. We have to sort of take a big step back and ask why we publish. So that leads me to a final question, and again, back to peer review fraud. Do you think that the ultimate answer lies with the individual journals, with journals being more cautious about peer review? Or do you think that industry-wide changes to journal submission systems, to reviewer vetting, are going to be necessary? I think both at the same time. But what is a dilemma here? So I have been talking to many of those publishers that I mentioned in my article, and they're taking it extremely seriously. Publishers like Springer and Hindawi, they have thousands of journals and they are taking it very seriously. But their answer is then to be making publishing even more bureaucratic, if I may use that word. They are taking things away from the editors and over to the publisher, for example, and putting very many things in place. But at the same time, I'm thinking that the problem is that it become too industrial. And I would like to see more responsibility on the individual journal. For example, I think it's a bit problematic with who has the responsibility when there are no editor-in-chief and that many, many journals do not have an editor-in-chief anymore. And who has the responsibility then? That I think is difficult to see. How we get a sound system without being closer to the process in a way I think you recognize very, very much from working in the New England Journal. But I think we have to get back to actually being peers that are reviewing for each other either pre- or post-publication. Thank you, Dr. Hogue.